stay pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas Section 2.23711B of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such a closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law, now therefore be it resolved that the Falls Church Public School Board hereby certifies that, to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirement by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. Ms. Garibaro. Yes. Ms. Highland. Yes. Ms. Carney. Yes. Mr. Rasnick. Yes. Mr. Sharp. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. And Ms. Vodiska. Yes. Thank you. to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Change, so I'll just say I move that we adopt the 8.01. Okay, I move that we adopt the agenda as follows with the change as follows as 8.01. Oh, one should be moved to the consent agenda. Should be moved to the consent agenda. All in favor? do with a uh, uh, item that was brought to us by a parent uh, uh, some weeks ago about uh, school bus safety uh, and it would be a commendation for the, re the response that our staff and police officers uh, did for that uh, and then secondly a uh, uh, matter that came out of that issue was whether a legislative request might be made to uh, to Richmond uh, regarding uh, penalties for people who violate uh, the, uh, the the school bus stopping restriction, uh, and so if if we might add a discussion of that of those points to our agenda as potential action items, uh, I I welcome that. I'll, I'll move to that effect. Thank you. Madam Chairman, um, I have to apologize. As we were moving the legal matter to consent, we missed that last change. And <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> um, Mr. Sharp requested adding an item on the agenda for discussion having to do with uh, school buses. Okay. And um, cars passing school buses unsafely and the ability to give tickets and those kinds of things. So if you could just add that. Okay, at the bottom of um, Section 8. Okay, very good. Thank you. much stuff here. Hi, my name is Lou Sevier and this is my friend Daria Butler and we're here to speak on behalf of the George Mason Choir and we'd like to thank you for your support for our choir. We are a very tight-knit community and we have a lot of fun but we work really hard and the past couple years we've um, transformed from a choir of 45 people to almost a hundred people and um, in the last uh, 
year, we've met every morning at 7 a.m. Uh, we have two choirs at our school, one of which is audition-based, and the other is open to everyone. As Lou said, we meet two to three times a week at 7 a.m., and we're all very dedicated. <laughs> um, there's been people in our choir who've participated in district choir, and some who are alternates for all-state choir, but also kids in our choir have had a chance to play for the community. We've um, participated in the school musical, the craft fair, um, some of us sing the Star Spangled Banner at sporting events, and there's actually a group of us who are playing at Creative Cauldron, um, not this Friday, but the following Friday. So <laughs> we've um, had a lot of fun singing around the community. A uh, choir is something that's really special to me because last year when I was a new student, joining the choir was how I made friends and how I found my place in the school. And I think that the teamwork involved is something that I, along with a lot of other people, have really benefited from. Definitely. So it's repetitive to talk about how important music is to schools, but this is something that Falls Church does really, really well. And we'd like to thank you for your enthusiasm for the music program at our school, and uh, we hope for your continued support. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Devlin, and I'll be speaking on behalf of the GMHS band program. Um, the George Mason band program has had a record year of accomplishments. The GM band program, which is over 180 students strong, has several different performing groups, including a wind ensemble, symphonic, and concert band, as well as a jazz ensemble, jazz combo, clarinet quintet, pet band, and a percussion ensemble. And here are a couple of highlights from our school year. The 85-member wind ensemble was assessed at the District 10 band competition on March 2nd, performing music of the highest quality, grade 6, along with the 70-member symphonic band, which was assessed playing grade 4 music. Our bands competed with those from Alexandria and Fairfax County High Schools. We were assessed by four adjudicators who rated both bands with straight superior ratings. 162 music students and chaperones recently traveled to Atlanta, Georgia for the annual music trip, which included a workshop and clinic with internationally renowned directors. We also toured many sites in Georgia, including Stone Mountain, the Atlanta Aquarium, the CNN Complex, the Coca-Cola Museum, and we also attended an Atlanta Symphony concert, which featured the music of Mozart and Beethoven. Instrumental music students performed for VCU's Festival of the Winds and Percussion on January 15th, and a record number of our band students also auditioned for district and state band. 33 GMHS musicians auditioned at West Potomac High School for this highly prestigious event, and 12 were selected for this three-day district event, which occurred February 3rd through 5th. Four students auditioned for state band at James Madison University, and Nathan Frost will be representing George Mason in the state band this week in Richmond. The George Mason High School Jazz Combo performed at the Chantilly Jazz Festival in March, and the GMHS Jazz Ensemble and the Clarinet Quintet performed for numerous events throughout the city and look forward to performing for the Falls Church Education Foundation's fundraiser at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in May. The GMHS bands plan to perform on a float for the Falls Church City Memorial Day Parade, and we hope you can attend our spring concert on May 31st, which will feature opera singer Carrie Paladin in Carmina Burana. This incredible, <laughs> this incredible opportunity is made possible by a grant from the Washington Performing Arts Society. We greatly appreciate your attendance at our performances and your support of the GMHS music program. So to thank you, we have some t-shirts that we had <laughs> custom designed for our Atlanta trip. You guys want to go on up? We like swag too. <laughs> Thank you, family. How cool. That's awesome. Thanks very much. So we just want to thank you one more time for your support of the arts, especially the band and the music program. Thank you. Madam Chairman. Thanks. All right. So thank, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I believe the quartet, the clarinet quartet, played for us on, what was it, the School Board Appreciation? month and uh, they were fantastic and the reason I, I was a 
clarinet player and when I was a primary grade student and I never could make it sound like anything other than a very scared duck and I was very <laughs> impressed uh, and my daughters are both in choir and I've followed them now from elementary to now they're at the middle school and one of the things that I have found amazing is the pyramid concert that you do every year and it's so special to be able to see all of the students from all of the schools together and uh, and when you guys do the one where you all sing together it's just really a unique opportunity for a school system of our size so I just want to tell you we appreciate the fact that you make music for us so thank you okay yeah. anyone else have a comment Mr. Schoen? Thank you for your patience tonight you've obviously waited quite a while to come and and give your verbal description of your your wonderful season for us thank you uh, but also I, I want to relate a little bit of uh, my family experience of my son being in a, a chorus that consisted uh, of, as I recall, seven girls and two boys. And uh, that, was, that was the entire chorus in his first year uh, when, when he was coming into the chorus. He eventually went on to be a... a vocalist in the state chorus two years in a row and was the first one to, to do that in, in, in many years here. Uh, I think you, you guys are regularly doing that now, uh, multiple numbers of you. And it's just an outstanding tribute to, to you, the change that's, that's come about since, since uh, the old days. And thank you to our staff, thank you to the students who responded to the, to the staff's early morning and late evening and other calls for your performances. Thank you for your hard work. Anyone else? Yes. I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, I was so impressed with you on the Atlanta trip, the way you carried yourselves, um, how mature you all were. And it was just so much fun to be a chaperone. I was dreading it. I have put it off for years. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know, my older daughter is a junior in college, and I never chaperoned a trip ever um, for the band, and I can't wait to go next year. So I would just want to say thank you all. It was such an enjoyable time, as well as being able to be at the district competition the last few years. You all are amazing. Thanks. I'm going to add one last thing, which is I love it when our students come to visit us, not just because we get to meet them and hear about their accomplishments, but they're always so smart and articulate in front of a crowd. It just makes me so proud. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Our teachers, two of them are here. Our TJ art teachers here, and so is our high school. So you want to invite the art teachers to come forward? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a recognition of students who participated in the VSBA art show. If our art teachers could come forward, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, my colleague, Ms. Wadiska, who is the president this year of the Virginia School Board Association, to talk just a little bit about the VSBA art show so the community understands what it is, and then to recognize, uh, along with the teachers, the students who participated. So if you'll go first, and then we'll ask the teachers to say a few words, and then we'll have our students come up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I want to say that the Virginia School Boards Association has an opportunity each year to highlight excellence in student art, knowing that art is a wonderful way, just like we heard from our musicians and singers just before this, to express oneself, uh, find community and continuity with the schools, and it's an incredible valued asset for our society. And so this year, we, each year, each school division has the opportunity to select and nominate artists in the community to be representative with the re across the state. And this year there were three young special artists here in the City of Falls Church that represented our school system uh, across the state with other school systems. And the, tonight is an opportunity for us to recognize their talent, their creativity, and their commitment to their craft. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the faculty to describe um, their work, and then we'll present certificates to the three artists. Correct, Madam Chair? Yeah. Thank you, and good evening. I'm Maria Shields. I teach uh, the, er, the younger students at George Mason High School, Art 1 and 2, and this is Angelica Johns, and her piece was sent. Let me hold it up. And this is a color wheel. Um, 
what they do is it's primary colors, it's complementary colors. They only receive red, yellow, and blue, and black and white. And the rest is just beautiful, critical thinking. You can see what she's done here with her shading and her value. And uh, it is tempera paint, and it's not acrylic. It's uh, their first color assignment, and uh, Angelica is obviously extraordinarily talented. And I was very pleased to, to send her piece. So she's representing uh, the 8 through 12 category. And this is her and her mom and her grandmother here tonight. <laughs> the, uh, I'll let Ms. Rathje do our other one, and Mrs. Baird could not be here tonight, but we have uh, the artwork from her student that I can show to you, but I'll turn it over to Ms. Ra Ms. Rathje, Ms. Rathje now, and thank you so much for all your support also. Thanks, Angelica. And, and don't go away, because if you'd like, we'd love all three of you to come up here so we can get some pictures with your art. Hi, my name is Jules Rathje, and I'm the TGI, uh, Thomas Jefferson art teacher. And I'm here with Emmy Ridinger, a third grader at TJ. And for her project, uh, she did a really nice job on our foreground, middle ground, and background. So it was really uh, geared towards a landscape. And they looked at actual branches and turned those branches into trees. So it was a direct observation project as well as a, um, a depth project, which became a painting. And I'm really proud of her. She did a really nice job. Excellent. Yeah, you can come on up. <laughs> Stand over here. I'm also in charge of taking photographs. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> feel free. Yeah. This is a, a stunning piece from the uh, Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School. This is from Miss Baird's student. This is Kaylee. Hers. She's a sixth grade. It's called The First Shot. And I know they were studying Ramir Bearden, who does very, very flat shapes from the Migration Series. And it's just a scene from everyday life. And it's just a, an amazing piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's fabulous. This was the piece I, I guess the family couldn't attend tonight, but I know this is Kaylee's piece. So, Great. Angelica, can you hold two of them, maybe? Because you don't want to get a volunteer with us. <laughs> Yeah, take the picture and hold it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. She's cute, huh? That's awesome. I would have been too. I know. All right, enough of the fun stuff. Now we need to get back to work. <laughs> The important matters of the evening. The next item uh, on the agenda is the consent agenda. So, uh, Mr. Kimball, I'll turn it over to you. With pleasure, madam. Uh, first uh, item on the consent agenda, personnel resignations, that the school board approved the following resignations uh, at the end of the 2011-2012 school year. Karen Post, special education teacher, Mount Daniel. Callahan Murphy, second grade teacher, Thomas Jefferson. Maureen Taylor, Spanish teacher, Mary Ellen Henderson. Jessica Knopfsinger, science teacher, George Mason. Uh, Pamela Ricker, theater teacher, George Mason. And Carolyn Summers, special education teacher, George Mason. Uh, not returning from leave of absence, Susan Johnson, a second grade teacher, Thomas Jefferson. And John Mays, a special education teacher at Mary Ellen Henderson. And uh, we have also two retirements that the board accept the following retirements, effective the end of the 2011-2012 school year. Ann Gordon, part-time teacher, Mount Daniel, and Cynthia Carlson, full-time teacher, Mount Daniel. Extra pay for extra duty assignments that the school board approved the following EPED assignments. One athletic EPED assignment, George Mason, for spring 2012, and five extracurricular EPED assignments Thomas Jefferson 
for spring 2012. Advisory committee reappointments that the school board approve the following advisory committee reappointments. Janet Kahn and Keith Thackeray, gifted and talented advisory committee for terms ending June 30th, 2015. And Connie Hippolyte, gifted and talented advisory committee for a term ending June 30th, 2014. Daria Tutanico and Michael Ankuma uh, to the Extended Daycare Advisory Board for terms ending June 30th, uh, 2014. Uh, second reading and adoption of policy that the school board waive first reading and approve second reading and adoption of policy 8.22 SAF salary schedules as uh, presented or discussed and uh, minutes that the board approve the minutes of March the 6th, 2012, March the 13th, 2012, and March the 27th, 2012, and presented. And the last item is a legal matter that the school board authorize the superintendent to act on behalf of Falls Church City Public Schools in settling a legal matter as discussed by the board in closed session. All right, that was a mouthful tonight. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I move the school board approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. And there, is there a second? Ms. Highland seconds that motion. Is there any discussion? I call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed or abstentions? All right, very good. We've approved the consent agenda. Um, the next uh, matter of information moving on to Section 8 business action information is the legislative update. Um, I did give you um, during the work session a letter that the governor issued today that just kind of outlines a little bit of that he basically is supporting uh, what's, what was coming out of the General Assembly, Assembly this year in that the mandatory contribution five years to contribute for VRS. Um, but there is a general um, assembly budget session on April 17th. The veto session will be on the 18th. I'm not expecting huge change. Um, and really, I don't feel like there's a great deal to share with you tonight other than, and it's just keeping you up to date, the latest numbers that we have seen um, would, would bring about 72,000 back in cost of competing. But again, until everything is over and done in Richmond, um, we, don't, we won't know for sure. The money that they've talked about putting back into VRS, the number that we've been given for Falls Church is about $11,000 of assistance. And as you remember, it's a $1.1 million increase. So um, the 11,000 is not, because of, of where we're based in Northern Virginia, it's not going to have a huge, uh, be a huge help for us. Um, but that's really where we are right now. And I'll continue to update you as I get more information. Um, VAS usually sends an update on Friday or Monday. So as, if I get that, I will forward that to you as well. The $72,000 you mentioned for cost of competing, mm -hmm. that's over and above what we have already included in our budget? Actually, it, it is not. Okay, uh, when, is it? when the board passes budget, what we did is we took a look at the House and at the Senate oh. and sort of did our best which, which way is it going to go. It would actually, um, if memory served me co correctly, we, we, we took a middle of the road um, approach and we, we, I think there's about 40 or 50,000 we thought we would get back so this would be about 25 to 30 thousand dollars in addition to that number. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. I appreciate that Mr. Kimball. Are there any other questions about this topic? Yes. Mr. Sharp. A couple questions that there are um, some items here discussing a, uh, a hybrid mm -hmm. uh, plan of uh, it appears that the hybrid involves disability coverage uh, as opposed to a uh, combination of defined benefit and divine, defined contribution for retirement. Is that, is that what I'm seeing here or, or not? And I'm going to be very honest with you. It's the hybrid they've been talking about the whole um, during the whole session, but it really hasn't been front and center. And VAS has not addressed that for superintendents at this point to really give us direction on on what it means to us. Um, so I don't feel uh, as far as the hybrid. Now I know that what came out today, they're saying that everyone who's hired, I believe it's after this July. Is it this July or um, I'd have to look at the date? Will automatically go into the hybrid plan. But beyond that, um, I don't have all of the specifics for us tonight on the hybrid. Okay. Uh, well, I guess uh, for our subsequent meeting, I'd like to understand what the what the hybrid plan is is focusing on, and and also what our uh, 
um, if, if this kind of approach is uh, accepted at, that the governor is putting forward, uh, what is our year-to-year -year likely change in what we would be doing uh, if we're at a sort of 1%, 1% 1 1 uh, type of situation this year? Uh, what, is it, uh, what does it mean? Uh, is, is there kind of a steady uh, uh, increase in pay and in contributions expected over a, a series of years? Um, and, and if you could outline that for us, I think that would be helpful. Uh, lastly, uh, just uh, ask if there is still a, a VAS or VSBA request that is likely to be going forward to the governor for a, an, an, an amendment uh, that, that uh, asks for a um, a, a change so that there would not be a mandatory contribution by employees. So it would not be a, a, a mandatory uh, participation for, for, uh, for employees. Uh, school districts would choose whether to, uh, to have employees uh, contribute or, or they would continue to pick up the contributions as they have for, for at least the VRS1 employees for what, 20, 20 years now? <laughs> Mr. Sharp, thank you for the question. It, it is the position of school board members all across the state that it should be local choice as to whether or not employees are required to contribute. And that continues to be the position. Um, the position where the governor sits currently, I think, reflects an, in, an enhanced understanding that we can't go from zero to 60 in one year that they're trying to stair-step this. Um, but choice is still an area of discussion. And we'll see how that all shakes out. But you are correct, Mr. Sharp. It is the position of both school board members across the state as well as superintendents through their respective organizations that this should, have be, cho this should be a local option. Does that help? And that has been communicated formally and informally yeah. among all channels available. Yeah. <laughs> Early and often. <laughs> Early, often, and repeatedly <laughs> and the the governor's statement that he came out with today said that he he is supportive of the race um, and the phasing over the five years but the adjustment that they're recommending or that or that he will recommend is that um, he will allow the local uh, those those localities that have um, that could we're not allowed to phase in will now be allowed to phase in so they don't have to have the whole 5% at one time. So that was the give and take um, that came out today in the statement. Didn't really affect us. Um. So is there any conversation at all about not having to balance each percent that employees contribute with a raise? This, the unfunded mandate on local communities that? I think, that, you know, VAS has been very strong that obviously that, that um, they're not supportive of the mandate. VSBA has been as well as, as uh, Ms. Wadiska just said. But um, you know, the teachers' union is, is very strong in, in the other direction. And so, um, it, the way that it stands is up today, and, and everything that I read is that I don't expect that to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So there are two things. One is whether people who currently don't contribute will, and that being local option to decide whether that school division pays or not. But the second part is the balancing raise that right. Both of is, those. Re is required. I just wanted to make sure that I understood right. that second piece. And uh, so it Madam looks as though there's no discussion really changing that. Right. Yeah. And Madam Chairman, just to let you know, uh, we did you know, receive this information late today. And the first thing I did is to scour it real quickly to see if there was any mention to that, to that mandate. And I could find none. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Are there any other questions on that topic? Thank you, Dr. Jones. Oh. Thank you to VAS and VSBA. And we have a very strong leader of VSBA here. And I want to thank, thank her for her hard work. Thank you, Joan, for outstanding leadership on this issue and others throughout this past year. All right, moving along, the next item on the agenda is the rule of law program. And I believe, Dr. Jones, this is your item. Yes, this is something that actually uh, Ms. Wadiska saw somewhere in the state and had forwarded it to us and then um, 
Ms. Kearney actually asked me to bring it to the school board, but we have such um, a progressive and aggressive staff that when I forwarded it to uh, Rory Dippold at MEH, he immediately said he'd been, he was highly interested and had been for a long time. So just having that link to the contact person made a big difference and they will be hosting the rule of law program at the end of April at MEH. So that is the update and they're very, very excited about it. Um, and to learn about rights and responsibilities and helping children really understand what it means to be you know, a citizen um, in America. So we're excited about it and, and uh, he thanks you also for passing on that information because he had wanted to do it and just didn't know the contact. So okay. thank you. Great, thanks for that update. Uh, we have an update on the milestone. Contract? Yes, um, um, when I spoke with Milestone, you know, I hadn't heard from them um, in a couple of months. And where they stand right now is not much different than where they were at the beginning of the year, except the timeline's been pushed back even farther. Um, in that Milestone said it could be a couple of years um, until we would see a poll. That with the merger, basically, um, it has shut down kind of the business um, across Virginia. And they're very, still very, very hopeful. They feel like George Mason is a fantastic site. Um, and that once um, the, the companies really figure out, um, you know, what polls they have where after the merger, that they will again start moving forward. But they were not optimistic that that's going to happen quickly. Mm -hmm. So. For instance, with the baseball lights, you know, I, I've expressed to the boosters they need to move forward um, mm -hmm. to not plant, not count on that pole as one of their baseball light poles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfortunate, but that's what it yeah. is. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the monthly budget status report, Mr. Kimmel. Hi. In your materials, uh, there is a report uh, as of the end of March, March the 30th. Um, this is uh, three quarters of the fiscal year has elapsed. And given monies that we have collected, anticipate to collect, spent or encumbered and anticipate spending through the end of the fiscal year, um, at this point, the operating budget is projected to um, end the year with a uh, positive balance of uh, 317 uh, thousand eight hundred dollars the food service fund uh, about twelve thousand five hundred and the community service fund about uh, eighty seven thousand six hundred dollars all right thank you very much anyone have questions about that <clears throat> all right don't see any uh, in that case I'm going to turn it over to my colleague the vice chairman mr. Rasnick to give the board an update on the superintendent's evaluation sure so uh, the code of Virginia requires that the school board evaluate the superintendent on an annual basis and by July 1st uh, we had some materials initial materials distributed to you via email uh, and with some forms and I'm just starting to sort of go through that process this will be my as you know it's the tradition of this board for the vice chair to sort of be the liaison if you will to the board on that process um, the forms this year were sort of a hybrid form created by uh, our former chair that sort of incorporates uh, the Virginia template for superintendent uh, evaluation with some of our board issue you know uh, desires that are laid out in our plan mm -hmm. and so um, I do know that I received a comment from one of the board members wanting some information on ability for input from board members and I just want you all to know that that's exactly what I'm you know hoping to get from this and not only input on if you like the templates if we could improve them in some way because like I said this is my first rodeo in this regard uh, but also for the purpose of your input for the evaluation itself um, the one part I do want you to know is that the code requires the evaluation in the areas of improving student academic performance, assessing teacher administrator skills and knowledge, providing safe schools, and enforcing student discipline. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that uh, because of the strain, and, and I don't know, scheduling or never, calendaring never seems to make sense in these regards, but you know, we will present her with an evaluation prior to July 1st as the code requires but we will not have test scores for her first year so there will be the very good and pro forma uh, and plus evaluation that she'll receive but there'll be further opportunity for us to provide feedback uh, and assess performance after we receive those test scores as well and I'm, and I'm sure it's something that Dr. Jones would want so that's sort of all I have in terms of an update. If anybody has any questions. Are you going to receive the, the test scores? What, what is that? So 
late June August. Oh, really? And actually, it's going to begin in May with online testing. We'll really? Day, so we could get them in. We could get them in time to incorporate. So that's fine. Uh, now that they're doing online testing. Yes. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Good. Any other questions or thoughts about that, uh, Mr. Rising? Thanks in advance for taking that on. I did that once as vice chairman, and it's a good amount of work, but it's good work and valuable for the mm -hmm. board that it be done, and for the superintendent. So thank you for that. Um, the next item on the oh, agenda. I had a couple oh. things. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. So uh, first. First, yeah, I've, I've lived through the, uh, the slog of the paperwork on this, and it, it's tough. Um, the, the two things I would highlight uh, first, one of the things that's been very valuable in the previous evaluation forms that the board has utilized was there was an opportunity, there was a, almost a, a Likert scale, uh, numbered one through five, and each board member could anonymously respond how they believed that a board, it was anonymous to the superintendent, it was known to the board members, but they gave the board members the opportunity to rank the superintendent, for example, on how we thought that the superintendent was managing the synthesis of data and presenting that information to the board in an accurate, timely, and cohesive manner so that we can make decisions. What was valuable about that, and one of the things I'd love to see still kept, was the opportunity to have that. Because sometimes when we have discussion on the board, you get the sense that everybody maybe has the same view. And what I learned through that process of giving each board member an opportunity to provide a rating, a number, associate a number with it, was sometimes that you would find that there was a board member or two that had a very distinct and different opinion. And that was valuable not only for the board member to share with the rest of the board, but for the superintendent to get that understanding that there was maybe one or two people on the board for whom their needs weren't, were different. And so it just kind of helped to add some additional data for all parties involved. Um, and so I, I have found that to be valuable, and I think other board members did too. And there's also an opportunity sometimes where that can lend the board to have a clear discussion amongst themselves about what are the expectations. Because, for example, if you have three board members say one thing, you have four board members on the exact opposite side of that, that's a board's problem. That's not the superintendent's problem. And the board has to sort out their needs and expectations. So I just kind of wanted to give the rationale for why I thought the, the, the numbers being tied to that and each board member owning their numbers and kind of contributing had value. So that's kind of issue number one. Issue number two, and we've talked about this in the past, was really trying to better link up the superintendent's evaluation with the strategic plan or the work plan or whatever document the board was really working with at that time and to link those up. We have a requirement, just as Mr. Rasnick has noted, to comply with the Code of Virginia which is separate and apart and somewhat sometimes also related to what we really want to achieve here. And so just because we have these requirements that the state wants that may or may not entirely reflect our ambitious goals that we have here in the city. And so um, what I would love to see in terms of process would be coming up with a good evaluation instrument, coming up with a clear set of expectations so that as we go forward, Dr. Jones would know what she was being evaluated on. And this is kind of this odd year where we kind of have to go through the process, but because we haven't been entirely clear up front about precisely what it is that we expected um, for the evaluation instrument, I think we also have to be very cognizant about how that's handled. So I think it's just good that everybody has that in and I just, that was kind of my, my thoughts that I wanted to share with the board. So thank you for bringing it forward. I'd love to see what other people think about this. Um, it is a, it's probably one of the, the most, other than hiring the superintendent, evaluating and providing a good constructive um, and supportive environment for the superintendent from the school board is our second most important responsibility. Because mm -hmm. you are their chief educator. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you. 
All right, uh, moving on to the next item, which is the addition to our agenda that Mr. Sharp requested be added. So I will turn over the dais to Mr. Sharp to introduce his ideas to the board. Thank you. It has two aspects. Uh, the first is uh, a request. Uh, uh, I'll just uh, try to state it, state it simply, and that's to ask the board chair to develop a letter of commendation uh, to our transportation leadership and to the police uh, for uh, responsiveness uh, to school bus safety and and the concerns of our parents uh, and to reference the letter that we received and the, and the follow-up that the uh, our transportation uh, director and and then the police uh, provided and and I think from those documents uh, the letter could be uh, uh, developed from there so that's a uh, first thing second is uh, whether uh, we would uh, send forward uh, again, with uh, the chair, I guess, uh, uh, drafting a, a communication to the governor uh, asking for an amendment uh, that would allow for penalties to be applied uh, as a result of violators of the school bus stopping <laughs> restriction, uh, that, that they could be, uh, uh, that, that penalties could be assessed based on video uh, recording of, of such an incident. All right. Those those two items. Very good. Thanks, Karen. Anybody have questions or thoughts about those things? Anybody have objections to his suggestions? I'm good. All right. Very good. Thank you. We'll see that that gets done, and we'll bring uh, those back for the boards they can see. All right. I think that we are to superintendent's report, Dr. Jones. Um, we did get news this week that TJ is a distinguished Title I school, so I'll just share that with you, and that also means you get a little bit of extra funding, which is always great. Um, the Chinese, we are hosting our Chinese delegation um, this week at GM, and I know that um, quite a few people are attending a luncheon this week um, on their behalf. Um, we're also recognized today our support employee nominees of the year, and so we'll be announcing um, the winner for FCCPS very shortly, but just an outstanding group of you know, support employees this year. Um, and just over spring break, we did paint our TJ gym. So if you get the chance to peek inside, <laughs> it's wonderful. It's beautiful and white. And it just, you realize that it just was not white before. <laughs> um, and all of the duct work is TJ orange. Um, and it's really neat. And then um, we have plans. And I think Mr. Kimball and uh, Sevi Padilla, who have worked very hard, you know, within our current budget structure to also plan to have the floor um, you know in in June as well as the new curtain that right now really stands out because it's very old up against the white walls mm -hmm. but um, TJ when, when the kids come back in September the gym is going to just feel like a new place so we're very excited about that and that's all for me tonight well thank you short and sweet thanks very much um, I say that, yeah. that's a great benefit for our community as well it is. Uh, the gym is heavily used for recreational programs uh, uh, from our city and uh, uh, you know certainly our students uh, during the, the school day and and daycare uh, have have uh, regular use of it but uh, it's it's very well used by the community as well mm -hmm. so thank you mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would know what to do if I went to the gym at TJ and it was white <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll try and see. I sure don't recollect it that way from my years with kids there. All right, um, moving along to board comments. Why don't we go ahead and start with Mr. Sharp down on my right-hand side. I'll just note a couple of uh, things on the, on the calendar. Uh, one is the, uh, the chamber has their gala uh, that uh, is taking place at the Weston at Tyson's Corner. Uh, that's going to be on the 21st of April. And... Uh, of course, tickets are available through the Chamber's website, uh, which is www.fallschurchchamber.org. And then uh, there is also our Education Foundation uh, Gala, which is coming up in May, uh, May 12. Now, uh, the Chamber Gala is a Saturday night. The, um, 
pardon me, the, the, uh, the Falls Church, <laughs> the, the Education Foundation, uh, Gala, is also a Saturday night this year. And that is a change from previous years where it had been on a Friday. So if you're anticipating a, a Friday night, uh, Gala, uh, please, <laughs> please beware, it, it is Saturday night. And it is also at a different venue. It had been at uh, uh, the uh, Weston in, in Arlington, uh, but uh, this year is going to be at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And so uh, big things are, are happening at, at each one, and I hope uh, everyone will come out and support those two very, very fine independent organizations in our community. I'll just say I attended the, uh, the chamber breakfast this morning and board meeting, um, and they have uh, quite a, uh, a strong program of uh, building up business contact and, and building up uh, economic development in the community. They were emphasizing the uh, meeting that was taking place as we <laughs> walked by down there this, this evening. It's an EDA meeting and that the chamber would be involved in that. Uh, but also they, uh, uh, they acknowledge the very, very fine work of our staff outreach to the chamber, Mary, Mary Beth Conley, mm -hmm. uh, and the just regular um, things that, that she brings to the chamber from us, but also brings back from the chamber to our schools. And just, you know, I know one example that, that uh, perhaps uh, people have, have seen is a uh, uh, sort of a mural in, in uh, the cafetorium that shows the application of math, uh, math study that would be typical in middle school to business situations. And, and uh, I think it's very, very instructive for, for our kids, uh, but also, also I think it, it helps uh, our community to, um, to be involved in their education. And, and uh, I know Mary Beth was very instrumental in getting that, that uh, connection between our business community and the schools. And, and it's just, just one example of how, how uh, she does that kind of thing uh, on a, just on an ongoing basis. So thanks very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just sort of getting back from spring breaks. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, I know tomorrow night is the George Mason PTSA meeting, and the um, program is going to sort of t take a look at some of the previous programs that have gone on this year. Sue Ehrman, the president this year, has brought a lot of really good discussions and programs in. Um, there's been talk about study skills, substance abuse issues, um, power school, and then how parents can use that, um, brain development. And so she's invited, uh, the PTSA has invited uh, Melissa Atkinson, who is a uh, parent of current and former Falls Church City School students, uh, a former teacher and an, a clinical social worker. And she's gonna come in and just sort of have a discussion about keeping the conversations going with your children and among you know parents and teachers and and sort of a question question and answer type session. So it sounds very interesting, um, and I'm sure it'll be very engaging because we've had really great attendance this year at our meetings. Um, and coming up in not this coming weekend, but the following weekend is the um, state. National History Day competition in Williamsburg. I will be going down there with a competitor. Myself. Oh, I'm okay. very excited about that. Oh, but uh, we have exciting. a couple of kids from the middle school and high school who will be competing. And so I'll be excited to come back and report on that in a few weeks. Thanks. All right, very good. Ms. Jay? Well, tomorrow night is a night where there's a lot of activities competing for people's time and attention. <laughs> Another activity is the um, CBC is hosting a candidate forum for the city council and um, school board candidates at ArtSpace. And Craig Cheney, myself, and Debbie Hiscott will be there helping to, um, helping to, with the discussion, let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a fun evening. Also tomorrow night is the daycare advisory board meeting, and since I will would not be able to attend otherwise, and other members um, wanted to be able to attend the CBC forum. We're meeting at, at 6.30. Yeah. And, um, but from last month's meeting, what I want to report is, cause, um, their registration numbers are very high. They've had to close off some weeks 
The last two weeks of summer are overbooked. They have a wait list that is amazingly long, longer than they usually do. And so Katie Clinton is asking parents who have already registered, who know they may be gone a week over the summer, to go ahead and cancel that week mm. to allow some other parents on the wait list to go ahead and sign up their kids. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, um, when the band kids were here, I went on the band trip, and that was a lot of fun. The kids were great. And, um, you know, our uh, Mary Jo West and um, Lauren Glass do such a great job with the band and the chorus kids. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ms. Garibay. Thank you. And Ms. Vadiska. And Mr. Randall. Uh, I only have one thing. Uh, tomorrow night is the uh, Parks and Rec Advisory uh, Commission meeting, and one of the things that is being uh, discussed is the council's decision to push the uh, traffic calming and safe routes to schools plan down to boards and commissions. Uh, and I just want everyone to be aware that those things will be sort of being discussed before council uh, takes the issue up and sets a public forum. But it does impact us in the Safe Routes to School mm -hmm. uh, aspect, and I just wanted you to be aware of it that tomorrow night the, we'll be, I think we're the first body to be looking at it. So mm -hmm. I'll report back to you on what happens. I know there has been some hubbub because there are some pretty, there are some um, issues with the bike lanes that I know mm -hmm. have been taking you know it's going to basically take off street parking off of at least the plan is that will take off street parking off of some pretty major streets in the city yeah so anyway yeah we have so much <clears throat> capacity for parking as it is <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, just a couple of things for me first for those people out in the audience who are budget watchers this school board will be meeting on Thursday evening at 7:30 in this building downstairs i expect with City Council on the topic of our operating budget for next year as well as our CIP recommendation and request. And so if you'd like a civics lesson or you're interested, please come out and, um, and see that discussion. We're hoping that will be the final uh, work session for this board in the budget season this year as the council moves forward to, to approve a budget. Um, the second thing, and just to kind of um, for my colleagues as a kind of a personal announcement and warning, is um, starting this month I'll be participating in a program called Lead Virginia. Uh, it's a, ca a social capital program where it brings together leaders from around the state, from academics, from business, from government, from nonprofits, to try to envision a better future for our state, a region at a time, and then statewide. And um, I tell you this because uh, you may well be my guinea pigs. I'll certainly, as need be, be coming back to you for advice and counsel and asking for your questions and input. Um, this is a seven-month-long session. It'll end in the, in the fall time frame. So, so be prepared for that. Um, and uh, for the uh, board's information, uh, we have the enrollment reports under materials for board review. And um, we aren't losing children. <laughs> we're not downwardly spiraling we're getting more and more kids and we love them each and every one uh, if there's nothing else I'll call adjournment so I'm going to turn my head and I don't see anything else so I think we are adjourned for this evening and thank you very much